heard my front tire start squeaking. That was quite a hike up here. Oh. Well, good morning, friend humans. I'm just leaving my aunt and uncle's place in Westerville. And uh, it's good to be back out on the, the road in the morning time. Whew. Got about a 56, 60 mile day to get from Westerville to the Bridge of Dreams. That's the goal for today. Oh, it was so nice to see my family. I was expecting only to stay with my aunt and uncle and maybe see my, my cousins, uh, Randy and Maggie and Liam. But there ended up being this uh, huge group of folks. Well, maybe not huge, but a great group of folks. Many of the Columbus area relatives all came together. It was so good to see them. Some of them I haven't seen for a decade. It warmed my heart as much as being in the warm bed, warmed my body. And now I'm back out in the cold. Well, cold-ish. It's nowhere near as bad as it's been in the previous mornings. I think it's in the 40s or 50s this morning. Uh, however, there's a challenge for today, and that is rain. Rain is expected um, this afternoon. And it's supposed to be a light sprinkling, but it'll be a good test for the rain gear and see how things actually go uh, before we get to the Bridge of Dreams. Anyway, it's nice to be back underway. I gotta pay attention to the roads out here because Westerville is not an easy place to get around via bike. I was glad there was a bike trail, at least this far. All right, let's go. Sucker for walking through gardens, it's true. and over the road. Decided since there was a Kroger right here on the trail, time to stop in and get, I don't know, some chicken or tuna or something to have with my tortillas later. I'm riding through the town of Galena right now. First stop north of Westerville. You can't really see it right now because it's a beautiful part of the trail, but Galena was founded as a brick town. That is, they were making brick from surface clay. And then they found a very nice deposit of under, under riverbed clay in the Big Walnut Creek. They started having that shipped in. They had six employees when they started, 150 employees when they closed in the recessions of the 1980s. There was one small brick making plant that kept open until 1998 making historical brick for reconstructions and things. I just love learning about the small towns, why they were here, what people did. Now this is Yet another suburb of Columbus, but it's history in the brick that was being made here. 
so just outside of Galena, actually Sunbury, just outside of Sunbury, I heard my front tire start squeaking, which is not a good sign. It's not flat, and I don't need to change the tube, but it's definitely spongy. Part of the problem is that the tube pops in when I try to fill it with this particular pump. I'm gonna see if I can get anything in. Quite a hike up here to the top of the tower. This is the, the tower here. Obviously not all the way up to the top, but that's fair. You wouldn't want to go much higher than this for safety's concerns. Uh, this uh, chimney was decommissioned in the 1970s uh, along with the glass factory below. And <clears throat> They've turned it into a park for residents here. See some of the history of the town and also to have a place of beauty uh, to enjoy now. I do like coming up here to the top of the tower, even if I'm out of breath, because it's pretty amazing to just look down and see all the different sites. We'll see some of them up close later, but over there is a river of glass to remember the glass that flowed here, or remnants of some of the other factory structures and uh, that sort of thing. I'm particularly drawn to the park in the middle here with the, uh, the squiggles on the ground and the kind of half circle. I don't know what they were going for exactly, but it's, it's a pleasing design, especially from the air here. Uh, it all comes together. But you get a, a sense of the surrounding area from up here. Yes, there is the bike. Chiron waiting for us down there at the bottom, that little tiny speck. Hopefully this is audible. I've had to stop using the mic because uh, rains may be coming soon and I don't want it to get wet. Just leaving Mount Vernon. It's 3.15 on day four of my Ohio to Erie Trail. Got about 19 miles to go for the day until reaching uh, reaching the Bridge of Dreams, where I'm gonna hopefully be able to set up camp for the night. Storm is coming in, but it's coming in from the west. So hopefully I'll manage to stay ahead of the major parts of it, though I'm all buttoned up for rain or easily able to be buttoned up for rain if it comes. animal at the foot of this bridge. I think it might be a baby deer. Hello little deer. You're off by yourself. Yeah. That's a scary place to be.
really like these every half mile markers along the Kokosing Gap Trail. They really make it, I don't know, feel like you're getting to your destination faster when you see a marker every half mile. Maybe that's just me. gazebo up here. Stay dry and figure a few things out. Bridge of Dreams. Where I'll be dreaming tonight. As I understand there's a campsite below it. This is, I am told, the second longest covered bridge in Ohio. And I believe it was finished in the 1990s. It had existed as a railway bridge before, but it was converted into a covered bridge at that time for this trail use. When the idea was floated by, he said, ah, oh, you're dreaming. So when it was finally built, they called it the Bridge of Dreams. Carpeted surface. Interesting. All right, that makes nearly sixty three miles today. I'm going to call that good enough. <laughs> 